Officer James Rand of the Sunnyvale Police Department in California must have thought he was disrupting some kind of revelry when he pulled over a car with a headlight out at 2.40 in the morning. Three men were crammed in the front seat. Three older gentlemen were riding in the rear. Only one person had a driver's license on him, and to compound the situation, it wasn't even the driver. The registered owner of the car was not among those in the vehicle. So six men, one car, one headlight, 2.40 in the morning and one driver's license with no owners present. Though Joe Gonzalez was the driver, Joe Alcala stepped forward and stated that the car belonged to his brother. After asking all six men to get out of the vehicle and after the arrival of two additional police officers, Officer Rand asked Mr. Alcala if he could search the car. Truly, why wouldn't Officer Rand want to search a car he stopped under these circumstances? According to unrefuted testimony, Joe Alcala stated, sure, go ahead. At various points during the encounter, Mr. Alcala assisted Officer Rand in the search of the vehicle, opening the trunk with his keys and so forth. Sure enough, or I wouldn't be talking about these events, Officer Rand found three wadded up checks in the backseat area of the car. These checks had been stolen from a local car wash and were soon linked to one of the passengers in the vehicle, Robert Bustamante. Quite naturally, Mr. Bustamante was not pleased with this turn of events. He was looking at a prison sentence and a way out of his trouble. Now it is well settled under Fourth Amendment law that searches conducted without a warrant issued upon probable cause are unreasonable on their face. Needless to say, Officer Rand did not have a search warrant for the backseat area of the vehicle where Bustamante was sitting. So maybe he thought he was going to get away with it, but not so fast. It is equally well settled that one of the specifically established exceptions to the warrant and probable cause requirements of the Fourth Amendment is a search that is conducted by consent. That's what happened here. A verbal expression approving a consensual search free of coercion. Pretty simple, until it wasn't. Here's the thing. Mr. Bustamante was able to get a court of appeals to think that being free of government coercion wasn't enough to obtain a valid waiver of a constitutional protection. The appeals court reasoned that this search hinged on the waiver of a person's Fourth Amendment right and that the government was under an obligation to demonstrate not only that the consent had been uncoerced, but that it had been given with an understanding that it could be freely and effectively withheld. In other words, consent could not be found simply if it was free of coercion. If this sounds like a Miranda warning for the Fourth Amendment, you'd be onto something. Mr. Bustamante must have been delighted. Not only was he going to beat the rap, his name was on the verge of becoming a household designation on par with Ernesto Miranda as various police encounters depicted in movies and television shows would have to provide Bustamante warnings before obtaining a person's consent to search. And then the dream died. Robert Bustamante was returned to the less famous. My guess is that many of you never heard of him. So what happened? Justice Potter Stewart of the Supreme Court took an interest in the unusual fact pattern and attempted groundbreaking decision of the appellate court. There would be no Miranda type warnings for the Fourth Amendment, and here's why. In several decisions, the Supreme Court had previously held that voluntary consent is a perfectly justifiable grounds for excusing the government from procuring a search warrant. This seemed like a pretty good rule. The issue here is, what is voluntary consent? Is, is one free of government coercion as been presumed by most people before this case? Or does voluntary mean that the person granting consent has to be fully informed of their ability to refuse? Voluntary consent is not to be confused with knowing consent. Those of you familiar with the Miranda decision are aware of the requirement by the government to prove that a Fifth Amendment waiver was granted in a knowing fashion, that the suspect knew he had a right to remain silent in the first place. The best way for the government to demonstrate this is by simply telling the suspect of this right. This is where the Fourth Amendment diverges. There is no requirement to tell an otherwise consenting person of their Fourth Amendment right. If they are granting their consent without coercion, that is voluntarily of their own free will, the law will inquire no further. A valid consent has been granted. This takes us back to Mr. Bustamante and his near brush with fame. Though Mr. Alcala may not have known of his Fourth Amendment right to decline Officer Rand's request to search the car, he was not coerced in any way to approve this intrusion. In other words, Officer Rand obtained a voluntary consent, and that was all the Supreme Court needed to know. What could have been for Mr. Bustamante and the Bustamante warnings in the end was not meant to be. I'm Paul Sullivan, and this has been Fletzy Talks.